So we're going to take a look at multiplying binomials. Now this is a combination of two sections in your textbook because we're breaking it up just a little bit differently. So 3.5 and 3.6 is where you'll see some of this information. So just a few little reminders, um, algebra tiles, in case you didn't go back and take a look at some of our little grade nine review materials. Um, this is an x squared tile. The reason we can call this x squared is that this length along the side is x and this length is x, all right? If this length is x, that means that we could also say that this length of, is x in this next tile. We call the side length here one. So the area of this tile is x times one, which is just simply x. So if you're going back to this one, x times x was x squared. So x squared represents that area. Um, our last tile here is one by one. So this is just a ones tile. Now the yellow represent positive tiles and our red ones represent negative tiles. So we have an X and an X length here. And one of those must be negative for this to be an X squared negative tile. Okay, so maybe that one's negative. All right, this is our negative x tile. Therefore, again, one of our side lengths must be negative, and this is our negative one tile. So using these um, and a few of our other um, little things coming up. Also a reminder, a binomial, sorry, a monomial is a term um, to describe one term. So like a three x squared would be a monomial. There's only one thing. As soon as I add one more thing to it, so 3x squared plus 4, that's now considered a binomial because there are two terms, okay? So we're looking at our first example here, and our goal today is to be able to multiply two binomials together, okay? So x minus 1 is considered a binomial because we cannot collapse those two into one term. Okay, they are distinct terms, they are not like terms. And x plus five. So we're gonna multiply x minus one by x plus five, and we're gonna do that using three different methods. The first one is by using algebra tiles. So we want to represent along the top maybe our x minus one and our x plus five along this side. So that when we multiply them together, we get um, an area and that will represent the answer to this problem. So a positive x tile is yellow. So we have a positive x in both cases. In our first binomial, it's x take away one. So our ones tile is negative. In our other binomial, x plus five, our five is positive. So these terms are positive and so yellow. We're just gonna go through and decide um, via multiplication what color each tile will be. So this tile here is created by multiplying our x tile and our x tile. So this will be a positive times a positive is positive. And so we're gonna get that all the way down. A positive times a positive is positive for each of those tiles. Now, in our next column here, we have a negative tile times positive tiles. So we are going to see that these are going to be negative and negative times a positive is negative. So if we write out what we have, we have an x, oopsie. We have an x squared tile. These are all positive x tiles. This is a negative x tile. And these are negative one tiles. So we have one x squared tile. We have one, two, three, four, five x tiles. We have one negative x tile, and we have five negative one tiles. 
Now we can combine these two because they are like terms. So we are going to get x squared plus 4x minus 5 as our final answer. So again, that represents the area when we multiply one binomial by the other binomial. Let's see if we can get the same answer using two other methods. So the chart method here is similar. What we're going to do is we're going to write our binomial into these squares and we'll multiply them out in these squares and add them up to see what we get. So our first binomial was an x, so we're going to put one term in each square. So x and then a minus 1 or take away 1 was the other term. We're going to do the same thing in the other column here. So x plus 5 was our other term. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to multiply each to find what should go in this square. So x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is negative x. x times positive 5 is 5x. And 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. We're just going to write out exactly what we got in those um, center squares here. So these squares. Um, it doesn't matter the order. x squared take away x plus 5x minus 5. Now again, we can collapse these two middle terms. Um, when we're writing our polynomials, we t put the one with the largest degree first. So that's why we're going to put x squared first in these cases. So x squared plus 4x minus 5, which is exactly the same answer as what we got the last time. So these two methods look good. Now we're just going to go over quickly what FOIL means. We're going to use that a little bit here. So FOIL means when we have a binomial, let's say A plus B, two terms that cannot be combined, times C plus D another two terms that cannot be um, combined. We are going to multiply the first terms in each bracket to one another. So we're gonna multiply A to C because A is the first term and C is the first term in each binomial. The next one, O, stands for the outside terms. So in the outside of this multiplication statement, A is an outside term and D is an outside term. So we are going to multiply these two terms together. Inside is the inside two terms. Okay, that would be B and C. They are inside of our multiplication statement. And last, just describes the last two term, sorry, the last term in each binomial. So FOIL means the first outside, inside, last, and it's just a way to remember um, how to multiply each of our binomials together. So the last way that we're going to show this, uh, the product of x minus 1 times x plus 5 is we are going to FOIL them. So I'm just going to write this out a little bit larger. We're going to get x minus 1 times x plus 5. We are going to multiply the first terms. So x times x is x squared. The outside terms is x times positive 5. So that is 5x. Inside means negative 1 times x, which is negative x. And the last term, negative 1 times positive 5 is negative 5. Again, we can collapse our middle two terms here, and we are left with x squared plus 4x minus 5. So we've shown three different methods. I think algebra tiles takes the most work because you have to draw in that big chart. I like the chart method um, because it's quick and easy and is a reminder of multiplying each term. FOIL is the most common and we're going to use it. Um, I will keep using it um, as a way to expand my terms. However, you are free to use any of these three methods. So example two, what did this student do wrong? Let's fix it. Check by substituting a number for P. So let's quickly take a look and see if this student's answer is correct or incorrect. So let's choose 
I don't know, P equals two. Okay, so in our term, two P minus one, two P plus three, we would get two times two minus one, two times two plus three. So two times two is four, take away one is three. Two times two is four plus three is seven. So our answer should be 21 when we FOIL it out. So let's check that one. Four P squared minus three. So four P is two squared take away three. Two squared is four. Four times four is 16. 16 time, uh, take away three is 13. So because these two do not equal one another, we cannot say that 2p take away 1 times 2p plus 3 is equal to 4p squared minus 3. They must be the same when we substitute a number in. So what did the student do wrong? Sometimes what I think is the easiest way of identifying the error is just by working out the problem myself. So let's expand 2p take away 1 and 2p plus 3. So we're going to FOIL. So first, outside, inside, last. First terms is 2p times 2p. 2 times 2 is 4. p times p is p squared. 2p times 3, the outside terms, is 6p. Inside terms, negative 1 times 2p is take away 2p. And the last term, negative 1 times 3 is take away 3. We can collapse the middle two terms here. Notice that that happens quite often. So 6p take away 2p is 4p take away 3. This is our correct answer. We could double check by subbing in p equals 2. So let's do that. So 4, 2 squared plus 4 times 2 take away 3. 2 squared is 4 times 4 is 16, 4 times 2 is 8, take away 3. 16 plus 8 is 24, take away 3 is 21. 21 was what we saw up top, so we do have our right answer. What did the student do wrong? Well, in the student's answer of 4p take away 2, uh, 4p squared take away 3, they're missing this 4p squared, or 4p term. So they actually didn't multiply out these middle two terms. That means they missed the outside and the inside steps. What they did is they multiplied 2p by 2p, negative 1 by 3, and they called it a day. So they missed multiplying the outside and inside terms. Okay, example three looks harder than it is. What we're gonna do is we're gonna expand and simplify. What I like to do is look and I'm going to expand my binomials first. So I'm going to forget about the two for a second and I'm going to focus on expanding m plus three and five m minus one. I'm gonna expand that one first. So I have to keep the two here. So I'm gonna say this equals two times whatever I get for that expansion. So first, m times 5m is 5m squared. Outside, m times negative 1 is negative m. Inside, 3 times 5m is 15m. And last, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. That's the end of our expansion for that binomial times binomial. We need to do this again though. We see in the next term, so we're going to subtract four times two binomials again. So I'm going to leave the four out front and I'm going to expand these binomials. So first terms, 2m times m is 2m squared. Outside, 2m times positive 5 is 10m. 
Inside, negative 1 times m is negative m. Last, negative 1 times positive 5 is negative 5. We are going to take a look at our terms here now. I can um, add or collect like terms for the m's here and in this bracket. I'm not going to combine between brackets yet because I still have these 2's and 4's out front. So let's just work within our brackets still. So equals 2, 5m squared plus 14m take away 3. And again, working within our same bracket, we have 2m squared plus 9m take away 5. Now we're looking at a monomial times a trinomial. So we just need to multiply the distributive property here, the 2 into each term. So we're going to get 10m squared plus 28m take away 6. Same thing over here, except we're multiplying by a negative 4. So negative 4 times 2 times 9 and times negative 5. So take away, because we get negative 8m squared, take away 36m plus 20. Now we can combine like terms. So we have 10m squared and negative 8m squared. We're going to get... 2m squared. We have 28m and negative 36m and what we're going to get there is negative 8m and negative 6 and 20 gives me 14. So our final answer is 2m squared take away 8m plus 14. How could we check? We could put something in for m and double check our work. Exit task here, expand using your method of choice. Why don't you go ahead and pause the video here. I'm going to write in the answer. Um, so make sure you try it doing any of the algebra tiles, chart method, or foiling, whatever makes most sense to you. In the end, I got 2x squared minus 13x minus 24.